Good morning, everyone. Our reading this morning is taken from Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 25. So the Apostle Paul wrote this to the church in Galatia, and he said, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Morag, very much indeed. So to faithfulness and fruitfulness. The last few days have certainly had a significant royal theme about them, haven't they? And I hope you've all had some sort of opportunity to enjoy connecting with the celebrations in one way or another, whether it has been family events, neighborhood events, uh, other social activities, or watching some of the programs on television. And some of you may be here today, especially in recognition of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. And if that is what has particularly brought you to church this morning, then that's wonderful. Or if you connected online, particularly for that reason, then it's great that you're part of this occasion today. Because, of course, attendance at church on Sundays has been a core part of the Queen's life throughout of her life. It's important that we link our service today with this special weekend of celebration and acknowledge something of what the Queen has given to her country, but also recognize what God is calling us to be and to do. So the reign of the Queen over the last 70 years has been a remarkable anchor point and has brought a sense of stability during what has been a season of huge change as well as seeing 15 prime ministers through their times of office, she has witnessed firsthand immense changes in our society during this time. Some of those were summarized in a BBC News item earlier this week that some of you may have seen. Let me highlight just a few of the headlines from these immense changes of the last 70 years. I was going to make a little bit more of this in the service, but uh, other things kind of uh, crept in and filled up our time, so it's just a, a snapshot, that within those 70 years we have gone from the dawn of the space age to plans to populate Mars. We've gone from watching the Queen's coronation on black and white television to watching all programs on demand and exploring the new frontiers of virtual reality. We've gone from the birth of rock and roll to music streaming. We've gone from civil rights to Black Lives Matter. We've gone from the Cold War to the most recent invasion of Ukraine. From the decriminalization of homosexuality to legalizing same-sex marriage. From the dawn of the tech industry to voice-activated devices so that we can access uh, information wherever we are. Just a snapshot 
of those immense and massive changes over 70 years. Some of you, of course, will have witnessed all of those 70 years within your life. Uh, for many of us, the Queen's reign extends beyond our own actual lives. And in this extraordinary time of change, the Queen has been a constant. And whatever our views on the monarchy as an institution, we cannot avoid being drawn into a sense of wonder and of gratitude at the remarkable service that's been given by the Queen over 70 years. And one of the prayers that she spoke before her coronation, and I quote, that God may give me wisdom and strength to carry out the solemn promises I shall be making, that I may say faithfully serve him and you all the days of my life. That quote was on the screen in the earlier video. And she's certainly done that. And her faithfulness is clear for everyone to see. And I think over the years, we've somehow lost something of the spiritual significance of the monarchy. That within the coronation ceremony, there was that immensely powerful moment of the anointing with oil. In the case of the queen, she removed all her robes. And in the simplicity of her own clothes, was asking for the Holy Spirit to equip her for this royal role. And again, in reflection, used before the ceremony, she says, by the anointing, God makes, blesses, and consecrates me queen. And I am, until my dying day, his anointed servant. There is something profoundly spiritual in that moment. Today we recognize the faithfulness of the Queen's service to the country, but it's very important to remember that underneath her faithfulness is a very real and personal faith. And that, of course, has come across most clearly in some of her Christmas Day broadcasts to the nation. Uh, just a couple of examples, 2002. I know just how much I rely on my faith to guide me through the good times and the bad. Each day is a new beginning. I know that the only way to live my life is to try to do what is right, to take the long view, to give of my best in all that the day brings, and to put my trust in God. Like others of you who draw inspiration from your own faith, I draw strength from the message of hope in the Christian gospel. And in 2014, for me, the life of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, whose birth we celebrate today, is an inspiration and an anchor in my life, a role model of reconciliation and forgiveness. He stretched out his hands in love, acceptance, and healing. Faith and faithfulness are the hallmarks of the Queen's 70 years of service to the country. And our re reading today reminded us that faithfulness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, along with many other qualities. And today is Pentecost. Today we remember that remarkable outpouring of the Holy Spirit to those who were gathered in expectancy in Jerusalem. And out of that pouring of the Spirit came the gifts of the Spirit, came the fruit of the Spirit, one of which is faithfulness. So it makes sense that faithfulness emerges out of faith as part of the presence of the Holy Spirit. So this morning, bearing in mind the faithfulness shown to the nation by the Queen over the last 70 years, let's look a little bit more closely at this very important word, faithfulness. What does it mean for you and for me here and now? And if we're going to understand faithfulness today, then we need to begin with God. Because God the Father is the faithful one. This is where faithfulness comes from. God in the Old Testament is often described as the rock. Remember the song, ascribe greatness to the God our rock. His work is perfect and all his ways are just. 28 times in the Psalms alone, God is described as the faithful one. 
as the rock, the one on whom our faith depends. God our Father is the faithful one. And out of that characteristics of God, that he's utterly dependable, always the same, totally constant, out of that constancy, faithfulness of God, we see in Jesus Christ a demonstration of that same faithfulness. We see Jesus' complete surrender to the Father's will, that he always carried out his Father's purpose, his desire to complete the work that God had sent him to do, however difficult, not to stop halfway through, but to journey to the end. And John's vision in the book of Revelation was of Jesus Christ, the faithful witness and later in Revelation, he's described as the one who is faithful and true. So that which was inherent in the characteristic of God, faithfulness, evident in the life of Jesus. Then in the Holy Spirit, God comes to us and brings to us the quality of faithfulness. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, here it is, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So faithfulness today is living out of the place of faith. Living a life consistent with the character of God. Consistent with the activity of Jesus. Living a life that's inspired by the Holy Spirit, where this quality of faithfulness really takes hold. And it does make a difference. Faithfulness is not just holding on for a long time, staying in the same place for a long time, doing the same thing time and time again. We sometimes kind of use the word a little bit in that way, don't we? We will sometimes say of someone that they were faithful in visiting their elderly parents every week. But what kind of visit was it? Did each of those visits convey something of God's love and life in that particular context. Because true faithfulness is showing faith in everyday life. It's not just doing the right things regularly, consistently, but it is living with faith in what we're doing. It's not just what you do, but how you do it. The queen's faithfulness is not just seen in the length of her reign, but in the quality of it. It's not just how many hours she works, but the value of that work. Not just in the number of people he, she sees, but what she brings into every encounter. That is where faithfulness really shows. That's why faithfulness is actually a very powerful word. It embraces the whole of life and actually how we live every day. And indeed, faithfulness alone is not enough. It is the fruit of the Spirit. So God actually wants us to be fruitful through our faithfulness. It's something about the Spirit of God invading and penetrating our lives. So that we in turn can demonstrate both faithfulness and fruitfulness in the lives of other people. You see, Pentecost was such an exciting moment, wasn't it? I'd have loved to have been there. It happened somewhere in Jerusalem. We don't know exactly where. The beginning of Acts chapter 1, verse 15, refers to 120 followers of Jesus before the day of Pentecost who were all gathered together. So if they were all present, it would have needed to have been a fairly large public hall. You see, some people think Pentecost was the same place as, as the Last Supper in the upstairs room. Well, maybe. We really do not know. But there's a feeling that Pentecost was a bigger event than the Last Supper. So maybe a different location, but maybe not far away. But also, Pentecost became even bigger as Peter preached, and thousands of people believed and were baptized. 3,000 were baptized. And that kind of feels huge. And some people think that that sermon was on the steps of the temple area where, of course, the huge crowds would have gathered. So in the locations of Jerusalem 
as we move around the geography of it. We don't know exactly where all this happened. But we do know that it was a remarkable and fantastic moment. That the gift of the Spirit that day led to the disciples speaking in other languages, to Peter's inspired sermon to the huge crowds, to many new believers, to the disciples sharing together in community, learning from the apostles, praying together, knowing that they're part of an exciting, growing movement of those who were followers of Jesus Christ. Life was completely different because the Holy Spirit had come in such great power. Faithfulness and fruitfulness emerged out of the Pentecost experience. So what does it mean for us today as we come to this Pentecost Sunday and as we link it into the Queen's Platinum Jubilee? Our circumstances are all very different. Our experiences of faith and life vary enormously. But God is calling you and me to be faithful. What does that really mean? Here are a few bullet points. Hold on to the ones that really are significant for you this morning. Faithfulness means living out the life of faith. Faithfulness to others depends on God's faithfulness to us. Faithfulness comes alive through the Holy Spirit. It is the fruit of the Spirit. Faithfulness shows itself in being honest with one another. Faithfulness means staying true to our promises. Faithfulness is especially important in close relationships. We talk of people being unfaithful when they go behind the back of the person they love. Always very damaging. Faithfulness means staying true to those whom we love. Faithfulness means bringing something of the goodness and the love of God into every encounter, every conversation. Faithfulness sits alongside many other qualities, justice, truthfulness, mercy, and love. Faithfulness will lead to fruitfulness. It's not static, but dynamic. A life where others will benefit and grow because of who you are to them. Faithfulness leads to a wonderful transformation at the end of time to the church in Smyrna in the book of Revelation the vision of the risen Christ. These words, be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. If you have faith today, then God is calling you to live faithful lives. That's lives full of faith. And lives that are full of faith are faithful lives. And faithful lives will be fruitful lives. So it's good to recall the many years of faithful service that the Queen has given to the country and the Commonwealth. Important to recognize the significance of the Queen's faith which undergirds her life. But the challenge for you and me today is that God is calling us to be faithful in our life as Christians. To live our lives full of faith. To be fruitful because of the overflowing power of the Holy Spirit. And every day, and every conversation, and every encounter, will be an expression 
of that faithfulness, which is based on God's faithfulness to us through Jesus and in the Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. Let's hold a moment of silence. And just think of your life as it is today. And as you think of your life, to open your heart to God. That he might truly enable you to be faithful. Full of faith. And fruitful. Every day. Lord God, forgive us for those times when we have been unfaithful. Because we have lived half-heartedly and we have not lived fruitfully. Will you fill our lives with that gift of faith and that quality of faithfulness which comes through the Holy Spirit now and in the days ahead. In Jesus' name. Amen.